recently found a very interesting statement in this article that's up on screen. Um, doing some research for the thing of when Catholics, when somebody is identified as an arch heretic, are Catholics allowed to even mention that person? It comes to the thing of excommunication and whatever else, and, and uh, because I've seen this over the years, where a lot of uh, supposed <clears throat> brethren, they will not name my name. They don't name names. And yet in the King James Bible, Paul named enemies' names. And I've seen this really weird thing over the years of there's just this weird thing of I can't say his name, I don't want to say his name, certain preacher, you know, and I know that they're talking about me. And it's bizarre. And so I'm seeing if this is a Roman Catholic teaching. Looking at this uh, website here, this Catholic article, and it goes down through here and I found something else that's very interesting here. And it says here, the teaching of the popes, fathers, and doctors. Catholics do not call non-Catholics by the name Christian because they are not true followers of Christ. Pope Pius XII made this clear when he told us that, quote, and look at this, to be Christian, one must be Roman. Now, if you understand what's really going on here, there are two swords that the Catholic Church teaches that they have, temporal and spiritual. Right now, I've read this quote many times. This is the um, Church Teaches Documents of the Church in English Translation by Jesuit Fathers of St. Mary's College. Right there. You can see that. And it says, We are taught by the words of the Gospel that in this Church and under its control there are two swords, the spiritual and the temporal. Both of these, that is the spiritual and the temporal swords, are under the control of the Church. The first is wielded by the church, the second is wielded on behalf of the church. The first is wielded by the hand of the priest, the spiritual in other words, the second by the hand of kings and soldiers, but at the wish and by the permission of the priests. Swords, sword must be subordinated to sword, and it is only fitting that the temporal authority should be subject to the spiritual. Now, what happened in the first century? You had the ancient Roman um, Empire the ancient legions of Rome and Caesar and all that other stuff. And they became, they merged and became the Roman Catholic Church. Catholic being universal. But we've never left that kingdom. It's just merely changed now to the part iron, part miry clay. I do believe that we are in the fifth kingdom. I do not believe that the fifth kingdom is yet coming and the Roman Empire just kind of faded away and now just for, you know, almost, you know, what, 1700 years or something, We've just kind of been, there's no world kingdom. I don't believe that way. I believe that the Roman Catholic Church is controls all the different politics out there, of course. You know, the politicians and kings and whatever else. That's why you read about Revelation chapter 17, that the woman reigns over the kings. She's a city, and she reigns over the kings of the earth. Right? It's never gone away. And I just find it very interesting. Oh, we're going out to convert people and make them Christians. Well, Pope Pius XII, that signed a concordant with um, uh, Franz von Papen, I think it was, before World War II started, that the Nazis would be get the aid of the Catholic Church. Um, Pope Pius XII there said to be Christian, one must be Roman. I mean, you're looking at it on screen. So are they really converting people, or are they conquering people and turning people into Roman citizens? And if you become a Roman Catholic, if you join the Catholic Church, you are a citizen first and foremost of Rome. And your allegiance is first to Rome. Oh, it's just a religion. It's not a religion. It is a political system. Let me show the quote here on the page 74 of The Church Teaches. Let's see if I can get it in there. I've showed this quote before in other studies, but uh, right there it is. You can see that. You can pause that and read it. But I found that kind of shocking. So just an, another little interesting thing there. Uh, Catholic tie-in. And I have another article here that I printed out um, by uh, Edward T. Oakes, a full Jesuit priest, on the also on the thing of why you shouldn't name heretics and whatever else. So two different articles. I'm probably going to put this into a study eventually, but 
You know, I've seen this thing with the Baptists. You leave their system, and it's just kind of you get shunned. You don't even exist. I mean, I've seen, you know, I leave a Baptist church, you know, and whatever else, and you see them later on, you know, a week or two later after you've officially left, and, and they just pretend you don't even exist. <laughs> and it's just, okay, you know, and and how many people have, you know, gone against me over the years, and, and they just, you know, I'm not saying the name, you know. I just refuse to say the name of this heretic, you know. Kind of a weird thing. So um, another little sign that you're dealing with a papist is if they come out and they don't name names in their sermons um that should be a little bit of a concern there because it's not a new testament practice uh they named names alexander the coppersmith did me much evil you know i mean it's all about naming names just being honest um so uh, like i said it'll probably come out with something a little bit more detailed in the future don't know when just one of the projects I've been thinking about, but just a very interesting quote. To be Christian, one must be Roman. I mean, chapter and verse on that one, please. You know, so just thought I'd put a little video together on that very quickly. Um, we'll see what we can come out with in the future on that. Thank you for watching.